Um, what I'm going to be doing this morning is taking you through uh, the stages associated with the construction of um, an academic poster. So, um, I guess when you, you hear the word poster, to, to be honest it sounds like a bit of a, a, a Mickey Mouse exercise, doesn't it? Like something you would have done back in playgroup. You know, produce the collage of, I don't know, your day out at the seaside <laughs> or something. So, you, you might ask yourself, um, why have you been asked to do a, a, an academic poster? Well, the, the primary reason is it counts 10% of the, <laughs> of the visitation module. That's the, that's the sort of the main reason. Um, but some of the secondary reason would be, um, I don't know if anyone's thinking of going into either um, academia or research or postgraduate education. If that might apply to any of you, just stick your hands up so I know. Good. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, good stuff. Um, if, if you join that kind of career path, then um, the first bit of experience you get in terms of presenting your work um, to the academic community will usually be via a poster presentation at an academic conference. Where is she? Imi. <laughs> there she is. Yes, as Imi will tell you. Um, she's already had this, this prestigious experience. Um, so, that's the, that's the other reason, but I guess the third and final reason is it won't take you that long to stick a poster together, but you do need to know how to do it um, correctly because there's quite a few pitfalls shall we say. And so, what I've just forwarded you um, via email is this example poster here. So you should all have that sat in your uh, inboxes now. And what I'd quite like to do is run through what I consider to be a couple of um, very good example posters and then take you through perhaps some of the uh, the pitfalls associated with poster production and show you some, some, some lesser examples. Okay? Um, this one here won a prize um, at a fairly um, prestigious academic conference. Okay? So you already know that this must be of uh, relatively uh, high quality. Okay? Um, and so what should a poster do, in essence? Well, when you're at a conference, the poster presentation will usually occur uh, generally one hour before the, uh, the conference dinner. And there's usually quite a lot of uh, alcohol and uh, canapes and that kind of thing involved. So you're usually stood there outside the... Um, the, the main conference hall and you've got to stand by your poster and <coughs> ultimately you won't be required to present the information on that poster but what you will be required to do is, is stand there uh, and look pretty and um, ask any questions that, that anyone might have and on your poster presentation day it's exactly the same there will be plenty of booze um, plenty of nibbles and there will be various dignitaries from the academic community coming to look at your posters and maybe ask you questions um, maybe not but I would have thought you'll get at least one person um, asking you about your work now it won't be a kind of a grilling it will just be a friendly tell me what you did and why you did it and what the primary results were. That, that's all you're likely to get asked. Um, will you be marked on that element of it? The answer is no. So your ability to field questions and schmooze the, the various dignitaries, you won't be marked on that. Why? Because 
Ultimately, a poster should be a, a standalone entity. And you should be able to stand, look at a poster, and in a maximum of five minutes, probably better if it's two minutes, a maximum of five minutes, you should be able to digest all the information contained on that poster. You should be able to stand about a metre and a half away from it, read everything, digest everything in a maximum of five minutes. But if you can, if you can read a poster and understand it in two and a half minutes, um, well, that's even better. Okay? So, your poster should be a standalone entity. It should contain all the information required. So, what information? Well, ultimately, your poster is a visual representation of your dissertation abstract. Okay? It's a visual representation of your dissertation abstract. So let's just remind us what, what your, your abstract usually uh, contains. First and foremost, it has to sell your project. You have to give the rationale behind your work. Okay? You have to sell your project. So in the introduction section, okay, you have to sell your project. And if you look at this poster, in the first line, it, it does just that. Obesity is a growing problem in horses, okay? Due to long periods of inactivity in the stable. So it's saying, this is the problem, um, and the welfare of thousands of horses is going to suffer uh, without this work. So in the first couple of sentences, you really have to sell your project, okay? The, the, the rationale, if you like, okay? Um, one thing that this introduction doesn't have, and I think you should probably consider for your dissertation posters, is a reference. Uh, a reference to some key work. Maximum of two. Uh, for, for conferences, generally, that might not be required, but I think for your dissertation posters, it would be nice to have a key reference sat there in the introduction. Okay? Then the full bibliographic reference in small text somewhere at the bottom. Okay, but you can you can really make that text um, fairly small. So the introduction is selling your project. Okay? Um, the objective well, that's telling the reader a little bit more about um, how your work ties into the rationale. How your work fits in and addresses the problem that you um, outlined in your introduction. Okay? That's what's been done in this poster. It doesn't matter, to be quite honest, if your objective that forms just an additional bullet point of the intro. Okay, so your, your objective can be like the final, the final bullet point um, in the introduction. So, so you might put an objective in, you don't necessarily have to. Okay. Um, the next bit's quite tricky because obviously um, in terms of the method, the materials and methods, you won't be presenting enough information to replicate the work. That's what your materials and methods should have done in the dissertation. You will not have the word limit. Okay? So you have to give the reader um, a mere flavour of, of, the, of the key components of your methodology. Okay? So here we've got a Latin square methodology, seven days of measurement, um, one thing <coughs> that I'm not seeing on this, Black Mark, it didn't, didn't tell you how many horses we utilised, because that would be probably a key thing to, 
to have all your, your methods. How many mm -hmm. surveys you sent out, um, how big your focus group was. That, that probably would be a bit of key information that isn't included here. And, and there are probably several other um, areas of critique that, that we, can, we can pick out of this poster. Okay. So methodology should be a flavour of the method rather than uh, an in-depth recounting. Okay. Your results, once again, you're probably not going to be able to put all of your results um, into this section. Just pick out uh, the salient results, the ones which were uh, most important to your work, the ones which uh, reflected your original aims and objectives uh, and rationale. So it will be up to you to, to pick out which was perhaps the most uh, important results. And, and usually those will have been the ones that you popped into um, the abstract. So again, really, we're, we're really just talking about um, repackaging your, your abstract into, into more visual form. Um, in terms of the results, you will almost certainly want to provide a figure, whether that be a table, or whether it be a graph, um, I must admit, I, I'm usually a fan of histograms, of bar charts. If you're going to do a table, make sure it's fairly brief, and make sure it, it stands out nicely, as, as this one does. The, the last thing you want are rows and rows of figures which quite frankly will take you an age to read, an age to digest, uh, and before you know it, you, you will have lost your, your reader. So if you are going to include tables, make them brief, um, make them clear. I would generally be a fan of graphical representation in pie charts, in uh, histograms, scatter charts, uh, regression lines, if anyone did linear regression. So that, that would be a really good one to, to, to put in. So there should be a visual representation of your results. Um, somewhere, either in the visual representation or in the text, there should be a note about statistical significance. Only if you apply statistical tests. Some of you will not have done, you will have opted for a qualitative approach, which is equally as valid. Uh, but if you did do stats, make sure you, you tell the reader about them in the results. So, p-values. Okay, p-values. Um, and there may be other metrics associated with your stats. There might be a chi-square value, for example, or something like that. Okay, so make sure you get that in. Um, please, 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 make sure that you can read all the text, both uh, the figure headings and the text associated with the figure. And you can see already what's, what's the problem with this. You can't really read the, the, the table um, heading. Okay? That, that's fairly illegible. Um, moving on then, your final section should be conclusions. You could also call it discussion. Once again, you won't have much word limit here, but your discussion and conclusions must relay um, the main take-home messages. The main take-home messages. What did your results mean? What do your results mean to industry? What do your results mean uh, for welfare of, of domestic horses? Okay, there must be a take-home message. And it's generally quite nice if at least one of those messages is um, of relevance to industry or horse management or horse welfare. It, it's quite nice if, if, if one of the bullet points relates to um, that, that kind of thing. A um, couple of other things to say about 
constructing a good poster, and I think this is where this, this poster probably won its award. Okay? Think about use of space. There shouldn't be any dead space uh, on a poster. Okay? There shouldn't be any dead space. And as you can see here, you know, there is no dead space. And what would have potentially been rather boring information in the middle of this chart, then you've got this lovely graphic um, of, a, of a horse crib biting with a, a neuron and some, some brain receptors. Okay? And if, uh, if any of you are, are interested in, in buying that image, then we can, we can talk about uh, selling you a print for some later today, if you're looking at the artist. <laughs> Um, so, it's lovely to get something like that, but note, we haven't just got a, a, a sort of an Arab horse um, grazing in a, in a field full of lavender, or a, or a horse galloping through the pasture. That, that's what I would call wasted specs. Make sure that your images actually do something useful, so portray <laughs> Something that's relevant to the topic. So brain receptors, cribbing horse, you know, that'd be good. You don't necessarily have to do the artwork yourself, okay? And we also have here a picture of the product that they were testing. Uh, and I'm sure that for some of you that have been involved in product testing, you know, hair gain steamers, websites, um, marketing in particular, equestrian equipment then it would be nice to, to, to see exactly what the project is about. A lovely yellow, nice clear image there, it, it jumps out of the poster. Okay. So there's no wasted space. Um, the text in the main is easy to read. There isn't too much text on the poster. And as a rough rule of thumb, um, you don't really need to be going over uh, 400 words. But if you can keep it under 400, and I haven't done a word count on this, but I reckon this is about right in terms of <coughs> wordage. And, and that's where the real skill of uh, poster production comes from. Conveying a message without um, providing too much text. Okay. Um, so, moving on then, um, this again is an example of, of, of what I feel is a fairly good poster. Um, and when myself and Mary will talk about posters, Mariel's very much a fan of not using this boxed-in approach. But I do like it, and it probably comes down to aesthetics more than anything. I like to compartmentalise e each section and provide it with a number, uh, so you, you're, you're really sure about the logic flow through the document, where the reader's meant to be going next. And I must say, if I was producing a poster for another conference, I would still do it like this. Okay? boxed in sections. I like it. Um, it comes down to aesthetics more than anything. Whatever you guys feel right. Uh, and what looks good for you. Um, notice on my poster I have opted more for visual representation of data rather than uh, tabulation. Okay? And I once again stress that if you're going for tabulation, not too many figures and keep the table nice and big, nice and clear, easy to digest in a short space of time. Okay? So this too, I feel, is a, is a fairly good poster. Having said that, it didn't win any prizes. <laughs> um, moving on, well, I'll get you guys to, to, to draw some of the short thoughts out of this. And, uh, and what would you say is, is some of the main problems with this? <coughs> Loads of text. Like, 
loads. <laughs> and, and you can see that if you were uh, stood in front of this at a conference, you're hungry, you've got a glass of wine in your hand, are you really going to be asked with weaving through that? Um, probably not. So, so that's the, the primary shortfall with this. Um, what's that? What on earth is that doing there? <laughs> I mean, that's a real example of wasted space. Okay, that's a prime example of wasted space. And you can also see here, you know, you've got some bits, big bits of white that potentially you could get rid of. What's wrong with that? Apart from it's a bit gruesome. Loads of text, absolutely. Um, the, the other thing you can say about that is uh, the, the type of font. It's Times New Roman, which, when you consider that uh, some of your readers, even some of the staff members here at the RAU, are dyslexic, uh, this is one of the, the, the worst font types for, for dyslexic people to read. Okay? Uh, and so, Think hard about using Times New Roman. I normally go for Aria. Um, but the perfect one for, for, for dyslexic students apparently is Comic Sans. But I just think that looks a little oh, bit too yeah, joking. That's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. yeah, I think it looks awful as yeah. well. Just looks too, yeah. too much like a comic strip. Okay. <laughs> so, so those are some of the things associated with this. Um, you might also like to think about gory pictures, which we will really like. But, <laughs> but if you were taking this to a welfare conference, <laughs> you, you might like to, 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 to think carefully about putting this kind of thing on. But I would, I would utterly endorse that. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, this is the other end. Okay? Um, so look at this. The cardinal sin with this poster is an obscuring background. It's an obscuring background. Try and keep it white if you can. If you really want to put pretty pictures in the background, make sure they don't obscure uh, your text. Uh, because reading that is frankly a nightmare. And, and look at the text associated with um, the, the figures, it's, it's not good, it's not good. So that, that gives you an idea of uh, right down to the other end of the, uh, of the marking scheme. Um, so that kind of gives you a, a, a fairly good flavour of uh, what should go into an academic poster. I'm just going to turn my camera off quickly and then I can, I can take any questions.